gentlemen, we are standing and sitting here today in a black box theater. Not a conference room or an auditorium or a multi-purpose hall, but a black box theater. This place was built for the sole purpose of telling stories. These walls are like flypaper. They listen, they see, they remember. If you were to come back here in a few hours when all this is over, you could hear them murmur. Memories of melodies from the concerts and musicals. You would see streaks of something ineffable seep from the walls. Spotlights from the time this place became the sea. Dozens of undulating bodies becoming the waves that brought a nation to dust, that brought two strangers to the shores of Illyria. You would catch whispers of backstage exchanges and light-headed laughter, of anecdotes and poetry and the stories of the quieter kind. When the raconteurs have shed their stage presence and are splayed out in the seats, feet up on the backrests, little pocket universes leaking from their lips long after anyone is left to hear them. Soon, the words we've said here today will join those whispers. Such is the power of storytelling. Such is the power of art, too, for though some may argue, most will agree the two are one and the same. And yet, though we are content to marvel at this art and sing its praises and abstract in concept, when it comes down to it, I think we're a little more complacent. As anyone, when visiting family or long-lost friends, I dread that dreaded question. So, what do you want to be? And I almost never tell the truth, because let me tell you how the reply me. An artist? Well, you're too clever to be doing art. Or, an artist? You can do better than being an artist. As if being an artist is some kind of second-class citizenship. Second best, no, third, fourth, worst off option, last resort once everything else has fallen through, because there are more useful things to do. Second best? Telling stories is second nature to us. But it's really nobody's fault that well, so many of us have grown to think this way. Not when in even the IB diploma, the program priding itself in breadth and balance of education, the arts is still the only field you can drop without restriction. Not when there are colleges and universities who require it be dropped and some other more useful subject be taken up if you want to get that degree and do that thing you love. Not when there's this perpetuated notion that storytelling is something we only do for children, that the theater is a luxurious, frivolous entertainment, that painting is no longer as valuable now that we can take photographs with the things in our pockets. Not when, though we don't dispute the value of art, we still let it become harder every day to do it. Then again, there is a rightness to this. It's true, art is not going to save us. It is not some great catharsis that will purge us from the darkness we made. We're not going to step out of every theater and concert hall, changed men and women. A day at the Tate probably won't result in an instant epiphany, and neither will a crash course in art history. And no, it's not written in any holy text that sitting at corner cafes with espresso shots and ink spots on our fingers is the roadmap to a higher plane of happiness. No, art is not going to save us. But stories, stories will. Without stories, there are no what-ifs to be had, and there is no past to save. Stories, everyone, is why we are all here today. Stories are a new pair of contacts. Stories are a fresh take. Like in theater, when we want to look at something again, we put it on a stage. And though some may argue, most will agree, telling stories, looking again, is the reason we've all been talking all day. And though some may argue, most will agree, stories and art are really one and the same. Thank you.